Five points to Gryffindor if you can guess what this is. It looks like something you'd find under the sea, right? Maybe a seaweed, coral, or Nemo's home. Well, you might be close, but what if we told you that this is a mathematical seaweed? What you see here is the world's simplest math problem called Collatz Conjecture. A seven-year-old could have a go at it, but the irony is that even the greatest mathematicians have not been able to solve it until now. The attempt to solve this has been going on since 1937, and only a small dent has been made. Bet these guys wish it was a seaweed, huh? Stay tuned till the end of this video to know why mathematicians are so obsessed with this ethereal looking but simple yet complex problem, and how it has ruined the careers of many who were tempted to solve it. This, this, and this is all a visual representation of the Collatz conjecture, which is also called Ulam's conjecture, Hasse's algorithm, Kakutani's problem, or Syracuse problem. As you can see, a lot of people have had a problem with this problem. So much so that Paul Erdos, a famous mathematician, said that, quote, mathematics is not yet ripe enough for such questions, unquote. Excuse me, sir. We believe you haven't consulted Rick Sanchez yet. That man would have solved this problem in multiple alternate realities by now. If you would also like to give it a go, this is what the simplest problem in the world is. Pick any whole numbers and apply these two rules to them. If the number is odd, you multiply it by 3 and add 1. If the number is even, you divide it by 2. Let's try this with the number 10. Since it is even, we divide it by 2 and get 5. Now 5 is odd, so we multiply it by 3 and add 1. This brings us to 16. Like this, we go from 16 divided by 2, we get 8, which divided by 2 again, we get 4, which divided by 2 gives us 2, and then again being divided by 2 gives us 1. Phew! Since 1 is odd, we multiply it by 3 and add 1, which brings us back to 4, which goes to 2, goes to 1, goes to 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1. So we are in a loop, and the lowest number is 1. Now, the conjecture is, if we apply these rules to any positive integer, it will eventually end up in a 4 to one loop. Pause the video and go try it for yourself. We'll wait. Pretty cool, huh? But then what seems to be the problem here? It looks like a cool party trick discovered by German mathematician Lothar Kallatz, who was probably looking to impress some ladies with his parlor genius aura. Well, actually, if you get stuck trying to solve this problem, you can say goodbye to your social life. Here's why. The problem is twofold. Firstly, since numbers run to infinity, it is nearly impossible to prove that this conjecture holds true for all numbers. Till date, the highest value to be calculated is 2 to the power of 68. The second problem is that there is just no pattern. The numbers you get by applying these rules are called hailstone numbers because they go up and down just like hailstones do in a thundercloud. And though they eventually all fall to the ground, just like the number 1, there is just chaos in their movements. The results of applying these rules are so random that it's like rolling dice on the Jumanji board. You just can't predict what will come next. Why? Imagine the number 26 on this graph. If you apply Collatz conjecture, the number will go as high as 40, and in total it will take 10 steps to reach 1. It is normal to assume that 27 might go through a similar pattern, but who are we kidding? This is math. Expect the unexpected. The number 27 actually has a total of 111 steps before it reaches 1, going as high as 9,232. And this graph is all over the place. It goes all the way till 9,000 and sees a sudden drop. See why you'd probably have no social life? Imagine sitting and doing these 111 times. Just like parallel universes, the path that every number takes are so different. How do you even begin making sense of it? Did you know this problem had become such a headache for mathematicians? There were rumors that this was a Soviet conspiracy to slow down mathematical progress? Still, that's a better conspiracy than Flat Earth. Now, we know there's been 
just too much number talk. It's like explaining accounting to Kevin from the office. 67, 68, 69. Let's just go back to the pretty math seaweed. This representation of the Collatz conjecture was made by Edmund Harris. How do you go from a mathematical nightmare to wiggly lines a five-year-old might have drawn? Harris took the standard diagram and made some changes to it. Here, you can see how all these numbers end at one. If you take 26, it goes from 13 to 20, then 10, 5, 8, 4, 2, and 1. The number 80 goes to 40, then 20, 10, 5, 8, 4, 2, 1. The common number between them is 20, and whenever a number reaches 20, it will go down the same way. So to make things easier, this diagram uses the branches to connect to common numbers, like a tree. To make things look interesting for the math fears of the world, Edmund added a rule to this diagram for the direction of the branch. If the number was even, it would move clockwise, and if it was odd, it would move anticlockwise. So instead of moving upwards, the branches would move in a curve. He then just removed the numbers and thickened the lines. This animation shows how our seaweed grows for every number until the number 10,000. What's fascinating is how organic the structure is. It looks like things we see in nature, like tentacles, hair, or even corals. But it gives us a glimpse at how complex this problem is. Solving this is like detangling Rapunzel's hair. Analyzing every strand would take a lifetime, but there has to be someone who has got some knots out. This guy! Terence Tao seemed to have figured out what brush to use, to say the least. And what got him there wasn't years of backbreaking research, but an anonymous reader who commented on his blog asking him to check the conjecture for almost all numbers. To be fair, Tao is a prodigy. He was awarded the International Mathematical Olympiad age 10 and a PhD at Princeton at the age of 21. That's what it takes to understand this curse of a problem. So, Kevin, you aren't doing that bad. So, what jujitsu did Tao do? He basically used a sample of numbers to see if most of the numbers can be proved under the Collatz conjecture. It's like when you take a sample for voting preferences. You can't take the entire country as your sample, so you take a group that represents the larger chunk. It obviously isn't as simple as just taking random Democrats and Republicans. There are factors like race, age, gender, that play a part. So his sample also kept a lot of complex factors in mind. Using this technique and his Sheldon Cooper level superpowers, Tao was able to get a sample that maintained its character even as the Collatz process proceeds. His sample technique proved that almost all Collatz starting values, 99% or more, eventually reach a value that is quite close to one. This almost is the closest scientists have gotten to understanding the Collatz conjecture, but there is still a long way to go. What do you think of the Collatz conjecture? Do you think someone will ever be able to solve this mystery? Are there any more life-ruining, tear-jerking, brain-damaging math problems that can make mortals like us run for dear life? Let us know in the comments below, and we might just make a video about it. Just FYI, if you would like to have a go at it, the headquarters at Shibuya, Tokyo has offered 120 million Japanese yen to anyone who can solve this. That's $1 million to solve the simplest math problem. Till then, keep solving problems and smash the thumbs up button down below if you loved our video. And we'll see you again in the next one.